Hey YouTube. So I'm here to finally do the review for If Loving You Is Wrong, Season 3, Episode 9, Title A Room For You. Now, I'm going to be honest. I almost didn't do this review and I had time to do it. I could have did it. I'm doing it at the last minute because it was a horrible freaking episode, okay? And it is hurting my heart to say this about If Loving You Is Wrong, but I absolutely hated this episode. Like It was the worst episode this season. And I'm thinking that I'm in that headspace because... Like, I just need the story to pick up. Like, it's killing me. Like, it's starting to remind me of, like, season one, the haves and have-nots. And I stuck on with that, and it got better. But come on now, Tyler Perry. Like, you're going to have to give me something more because all nine episodes have been, like, not, like six hours? Are you serious? I heard Marcy say that in the episode, in this week's episode, this has been the worst six hours of my life. I'm like, what? Six hours? This has been like the worst, like nine, 10 weeks of my life. Like it's taking forever to get to the point. And y'all telling me y'all knocked out Randall and he still ain't dead. Like you dragging him through the forest six hours later. I mean, what was your plan? Like, come on now. It just really bothers me. And Alex is taking you six hours to get to your parents. Like, this is ridiculous. Like, y'all don't have bus stops. Like, you can't call an Uber. Like, oh, you didn't have your phone. Okay, well, you could have, I don't know. Like, use somebody else's cell phone. Figured it out. Like, and it really, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm not going in order because it was a horrible freaking episode. And I'm just kind of venting, okay? Because everything in this episode, it was nothing new. We knew everything that happened. Let's let's start with um, Marcy, since we know that uh, Marcy was on the ground and Kelly could hear her breathing. Kelly calls Lucian while he's in the hospital. Um, then she tried to make small talk, talking about, yeah, so how's Natalie doing? Girl, you don't care about how Natalie is doing. You know good and well that you're concerned because you hear your friend breathing on the phone, but you can't hear her talking. She's not responding to you. So with that being said, she finally gets to the point. He goes outside to go check on her. She's laying on the ground. Okay, so he calls the doctor for help and all that. And then so he um, finally gets her into a room. The doctors have checked her in. The doctors are like, have you eaten today? Have you done this? Have you done that? Are you stressed out? You know, you're really going to have to calm down. Well, you need to eat. You're eating for two. She's like, oh my gosh. And I'm thinking, girl, we've been knowing this since last season. Like y'all just now telling us that. Was that supposed to be like a wow moment, like a shocker? Because y'all could have just had her take a 99 cent pregnancy test. Like we waited all this time for this. And I know that Marcy is somewhat confused because she had fertility issues, so she wanted to get pregnant. So she's thinking like, okay, so should I be sad or should I be happy? Is my baby's daddy getting killed right now or is my baby's daddy really like Brad that's crazy about me and I suddenly love him, but he got some type of procedure to get, um, um, what did he get, a vasectomy? So he's technically not supposed to be able to have kids, but we know the procedure cannot work, but apparently it worked uh, when he was dealing with Alex because Alex's baby came out as Randall's baby. So uh, there's now we got to have a case of Maury, who's the father, and they may as well spend a whole episode on that too because you know how they do in If Loving You Is Wrong World. And she gonna have to they're gonna have to bring out the DNA results. I don't know if Randall gonna be able to be there because Randall may be dead. Okay, speaking of Randall being dead, so of course they had let Brad go from um um jail and he's like, Oh, Alex's parents has them? Oh well he's a dead man because you know Alex's daddy, he don't really jail with black people like that. So like nobody is in a rush. Okay, so speaking of that. Then all of a sudden we have like Eddie, Mr. Crazy Eddie, and he gets in contact with um, Ben and, you know, Ben has gotten roughed up by Eddie. He's gotten roughed up by Lucian. He's like, you know what? I'm not taking y'all stuff no more. I'm tired of people pushing me around. Lucian came and pushed me around. No, Eddie, I'm not going to go check on um, Randall's mother because, you know what, they sent another FBI detail and she just started singing, just singing like a bird. She's telling everything. So you can't come up here and see her. And so Eddie is like, what? Why she got an FBI detail on her? Ben is like, I don't know. I just know that 
I'm 45 minutes after Lucian came and roughed me up, then an FBI agent showed up. Oh, well, duh. Like, Ben, you can't be that stupid. So I have the case. Eddie is like, what? I knew it. I know he's the FBI. Let me find out we got a mole in the camp. Okay, so of course he tries to tell Detective Stevens, Simmons, whatever his name is. Y'all know the head detective that he's super rude to. So he tries to tell him and Simmons is like, Bro, like, he's not a mole. Don't worry about it. Just go do your job. I'm not even tripping off that. And, you know, I've always been confused about him. I didn't know if he was a good guy or a bad guy. Like, is he on, like, the bad, like, like shady side of the police station? Or is he, like, really just truly trying to do his job? Well, tonight we find out well, after he sends Eddie away, he goes into the captain's office, calls Lucian. Lucian picks up the phone like, bro, this has to be important if you're calling me on this line. He said, yeah, you need to be careful because I think Eddie is catching on. Like, I just made up some stuff and said, no, he's not a mole, but I think he's catching on. So I'm thinking, what? Okay, that is one thing I did not know. Like, but you could have gave me more than that in the episode. I did not know that he was going to be associated with what Lucian is trying to do and weeding out all the bad cops and like bringing Eddie down. So, I mean, that was kind of like a relief. Like, okay, he got some more people on his team. So, whatever the case, Lucian is like, okay, I'll try to keep it together. Meanwhile, in the same hospital, there's Natalie. Natalie goes and apologizes to the doctor for flipping out, talking about no, my son's not being no organ donor. And she's like, I'm so sorry. You know, I'm just like going through a lot right now. And the doctor's like, I understand. Like people flip out on me all the time. And she said, well, can I just see my son? And he's like, well, he doesn't look the same. You know, he's kind of black and blue. And she's like, well, I gave birth to him and he was kind of black and blue. And I'm his mother. So I think I can handle it. So, of course, he lets her go in. She goes and gets her stuff and goes in. So he's like banged up pretty bad. And I... I don't know, like, I really didn't appreciate this scene simply because all the stuff that she was expressing to him, like, we've heard her vent about it and say it before. Now, of course, this is realistic. Like, when a mother sees her son and she sees him in this condition, you don't know if he's going to wake up or not. You're like, hey, like, you need to come back to me, okay? I know you can hear me. You better get up out this hospital bed. You know, good and well, we can't afford these bills. The longer you stay in here, it keeps racking up, okay? And I want you to know that me and Lucian is getting married, and you need to be out here helping with your brothers and sisters. And you know, as a matter of fact, you're going to have to get a job. Like, you know, she's just kind of, like, trying to act normal because she doesn't want to act like this is the end, which, according to her and the doctors, you know, they've seen miracles happen because God can do anything. So, She's she's hopeful. And in Tyler Perry world, I wouldn't be shocked if a miracle did happen. I'm trying to figure out what's going on with Fine. Okay? We haven't seen Fine. We haven't seen Julius. I mean, come on now. Now, we did see Travis. I didn't want to see Travis. But crazy Travis, we saw him. So, you know, Kelly is still at um, Alex's house watching the kids and all that. Of course... She always forgets something, so she has to go back to her house to get something. Okay, she goes back to her house. She's like, I know good and well my son did not leave his window open in his room. And I'm like, girl, you know he did it. Like, why would you go in there? Like, I hate that. Because if this was a scary movie, you would be dead. Like, you don't go near, like, danger. Okay? You just let them have the house. Who's ever in there? So we all knew Travis was in there. So she shuts the window Turns around and here goes Spooky Travis just staring at her like, Kelly, you're going to talk to me. <laughs> and I'm like, this dude is nuts. And she can tell too. So, you know, she kind of like has a bat next to her because she's like, look, if you make any sudden steps, like I'm going to have to go nuts. She's, he's like, did you call the police on me? I saw the police over here. She's like, oh no, that was somebody else. Just like a little dispute or something. And he's like, okay, Kelly. But, you know, I love you. So when are we going to get to talk? Are we going to get back together? Da, da, da. You know, I'm so sorry. And, you know, I just went in the backyard and then I, I hid out in here. Da, 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 da. And, you know, you don't know what you do to me. I just love you so much. Like, and it gets to a point where she just kind of starts playing along with him, like playing his little game. And he's like, you know, are you still dating that man? And then she's like, nope. And then he was like, when was the last time you talked to him? She's like, yesterday. He's like, mm. She's like, yeah, he moved back to Ohio or Utah or wherever. And he was like, mm-hmm, yeah, he's gone permanently. I'm like, 
let me find out you killed him, okay? Because I still need closure on that story. All of a sudden, he was in the shower and crazy Travis still walked in. Then we ain't seen nothing from then. And I'm like, dang, well, how long is it going to take to get to that story? Okay, I'm just frustrated this week, y'all. Okay, so next thing you know, um, you know, she was nice enough to him basically to like get him out the house. And she's like, look, we're going to talk about this tomorrow. Okay, I'm over there watching Alex's baby. And he was like, oh, Alex had her baby. And she's like, yeah, I bet he looks just like Brad. Mm -hmm. Like, because I'm not telling your crazy stuff nothing because next thing you know, you've been snapped on her. Speaking of Alex. Okay, so Alex. Of course, he's sitting in the police car with Andrew, and Andrew is scared out of his mind. He calls dispatch because he needs backup because he can't go to Alex's parents' house with just her and him alone. He needs backup because it's outside of his jurisdiction. Well, all of a sudden, she um, she's like flipping out. She's like, let me see your phone, Andrew, because we can't just sit here. Like, my baby is missing. I'm like, girl, you are not in handcuffs, okay? You better get out that car. So she even said, I'll just get out and walk. And he's like, okay, and I'll just follow you. Okay, and then once we get to a point that's fully out of your jurisdiction, you will leave me alone, okay? Because my baby is more important than sitting here with you waiting on backup, for real. Okay, so the next thing you know, um, when she calls dispatch, well, he doesn't call dispatch. Um, who was it? Andrew calls dispatch for backup. Um, the lady there, all of a sudden, Eddie walks up behind the dispatch lady and was like, who is that, Andrew? Oh, he has Alex Montgomery in the car? Oh, great. Well, don't send back up. I'll just go. And then, so, of course, the lady's like, okay, well, backup's on their way. And I'm like, girl, you're going to get fired for this because some people, some people about to end up dead when Eddie shows up, okay? Like, come on. This is going to make the story go by even slower. Like, they will never make it to her parents' house. Okay, anywho, so... Um, next thing you know, um, Alex gets Andrew's phone. She calls Esperanza because she's like flipping out. She really needs to get to her parents. And Esperanza is like, wait, I, I don't see backup on their way. Okay, well, where are you? Okay, what's your parents' address? Okay, give me that information. This will help. And then she rushes out. Now, I don't know if Esperanza is going to show up to um, like where Alex is or if she's just going to try to go to Alex's parents' house and save the day, but I don't, they end up killing her too, so I don't know. But whatever the case, um, the only new information that we figured out was, of course, um, the detective being involved with the FBI and knowing that Lucian is FBI, but everything else is just like, like, you're wasting my time. Like, there's a new episode tomorrow, and I hope the goodness it is worth the wait and my time okay at least let's see the baby because i'm tired of hearing the baby crying in the background let's make this story move along because i'm getting sick and tired of it and i guarantee you we will not find out who the father of marcy's child is for about until next season but i'm usually more optimistic than this but i'm getting tired of it anywho as always, like, comment, and subscribe. Check me out at MrsBlogaholic.com. I'll be back tomorrow with the next review because it's a holiday week. Okay, bye.